In this video, we're going to talk about how to predict the transitions between different states in the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom, that is, between different orbits for the electron. And so recall, the Bohr model is the one where we have our nucleus here, and then we have a series of orbits for n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, etc. And there's energies associated with these orbits. So this is 0. So the n equals 1 is the most stable. Then we have the n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, n equals 5, and lots more order levels in there. And so when we see, for example, atomic emission spectra, or if we shine light at a hydrogen atom and it absorbs the light, that corresponds to transitions between these different orbits. And so, for example, we might send light in and cause a transition from the n equals 2 up to the n equals 5 orbit. For that to occur, the energy of our photon of light has to exactly match this energy difference between the two states. So if I call this difference delta E, I need that delta E to equal the energy of the photon. If I hit my atom with the photon and it has this delta E and we're starting with the electron in the n equals 2 state, it can jump to the n equals 5 state. Conversely, if perhaps I was in the n equals 5 state, it's possible that the electron could fall down to the n equals 2 state and emit light of the color whose photon corresponds to this energy difference, delta E. And so in order to figure out these energies, the delta E's and the energy of the photon, we need to recall that the energies of the Bohr model say that the nth energy level is negative 2.178 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. In reality, this comes from a whole bunch of physical constants that we're not worrying about. This is just what you get when you multiply all those constants together, times 1 over n squared. And of course, the energy of the photon is just h nu. So what we want to do is we want to calculate the energies of the two states we're interested in, take the delta E, and then set that equal to the energy of our photon to figure out what frequency or wavelength of light is going to be associated with that transition. So let's do the example. Let's take this example of n equals 2 being excited to n equals 5. So if I want to calculate the energy of the n equals 2 state, it's going to be minus 2.178 times 10 to the minus 18 joules times 1 over 2 squared, because n equals 2, and I get negative 5.45 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. If I do the same thing for the n equals 5, I have negative 2.178 times 10 to the minus 18 joules times 1 over 5 squared. Plug that in my calculator and I get minus 8.71 times 10 to the minus 20 joules. So my delta E, which is equal to E final minus E initial, that is going to equal E5, which is my final state, minus E2, my initial state, take the difference between these, and I get 4.58 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Sorry about putting those so close together. And so this is the amount of energy I need in my photon to cause that excitation. You'll notice also this has a positive sign. That positive sign is associated with absorption. There's energy going into the system, into my atom. If I had a negative sign, it would correspond to an excitation going down or a de-excitation, and that would correspond to emission, energy leaving the system. All right, now that I've cleared the board, in the last slide we just computed that the delta E for the n equals 2 to 5 transition is 4.58 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Now let's calculate the frequency of light we need to do that, or excuse me, the wavelength of light associated with this. So we know 
that E photon is equal to H nu, or if I want it in terms of wavelength, it's going to be H C over lambda using nu equals C over lambda. And so this amount of energy needs to equal H C over lambda, or in other words, lambda is going to equal H, which is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds times the speed of light, 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, divided by our delta E, 4.58 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And what I get from this is, and let me double check my units, my joules are going to cancel, my seconds cancel, and I'm going to be left with units of meters, I get a wavelength of 4.34 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, or I could convert that and you could show that this is equal to 434 nanometers. So if I want to excite my hydrogen atom electron from the n equals 2 orbit up to the n equals 5 one, I need a 434 nanometer light source to do that. Again, just to reiterate, the key ideas here are that we want to figure out what is the energy difference between the two states we're interested in, calculate that delta E using the general Bohr model expression for the energies of each of these orbits, and then set that delta E equal to the energy of our photon, which is either H nu or HC over lambda, depending on whether you're interested in the frequency or the wavelength.